Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come in, come in, come in. This is Tamika Zen. I am Tamika. Get on in here, y'all. Get on in here. Kick off your shoes and relax your feet. You are now in the den. So, guys, this is my review recap for Queen Sugar, Season 7, Episode 4, Spaces Fill. Baby, let me tell y'all something. First of all, you know, Sam with his raggedy behind, I'm tired of him showing up. Whatever you got in that closet, whatever you got, you know, in your little secret box or whatever vibe, I need you to pull it out and I need you to get on his behind ASAP, okay? I'm tired of him showing up every time we trying to do something out here and just showing his little freaking trash behind face, all right? That's number one. Number two, Micah, you need your damn behind whipped, okay? I don't know what you out here trying to do. But you really testing me now. This is why we need Charlie back here. <laughs> All right, y'all. We're going to go ahead and get into this recap. We're going to take it from the top. Okay, so we started out this episode. You know, Miss Darla and Ralph Angel is trying to get their swim on. She trying to give him a little bit of swimming lessons and teaching him how to float. I need to learn myself, honey. Okay, I'm with you, Ralph Angel. I'll be having a problem, you know, just breathing and trusting the water and floating myself. So we then see that Blue is in trouble, okay? He is in potential of getting suspended at school. I said, what did you do, Blue, okay? What did you do? He talking about, you know, maybe it would be good if I do get suspended because I could come back home and be with y'all for a while, okay, earlier than I'm supposed to. You know, he's really missing them, and I'm really missing Blue. We haven't seen him for a minute, okay? So I wouldn't mind him being back home. You know, and Zala basically is saying that she's going to go out there to him and she's telling Ralph Angel that because she has to make this trip, you know, it's some things he got to take care of, right? But she will be back by the time they go to Podluck. You know, she need him to go ahead and take baby True to baby and me or baby and friend, whatever it was called, right? He got to get her there at three. And then when she's like, you know, this is a test. What time do you have to get her there? And what day are you supposed to get her there for a minute? He's stuck and she like... Maybe I shouldn't go. He like, man, listen, I got it. I know it's later, okay? Because she was about to go ahead and put it in his calendar on his phone so he can't forget. She's super nervous about going. But he's like, no, you need to go and see what's going on with our boy. Make sure everything is straight there. So now, Billy come home, honey, and there's some giggling going on, all right? Miss Sandy is walking out from that room. I said, okay, Prosper and Sandy, I see y'all. You know, they wasn't expecting Billy to be coming back this soon. She was supposed to be out on this date with her husband. So they thought they had some, you know what I'm saying, extra time on their hands. And, um, you know, when Prosper comes out, he's basically saying to her, like, I thought you was, uh, you know, supposed to be meeting Vince and y'all was supposed to be having breakfast. She like, yeah, we did, but, you know, it didn't go too good, so I'm back home. You know, she just kind of looking at Miss Sandy like this when she come walking out the room. And they both looking all, you know, happy and smiley and stuff, right? So I said, hey, live your best lives. I am not mad at you, okay? So... You know, in the meantime, she's just letting her father know, like, you know, things didn't go as planned. I really didn't see, you know, the point of us really conversating like that, right? And he's telling her, try to be more open, try to give it a chance. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we just got to sit down and talk it out. He's like, look, he's here. You know what I'm saying? You may as well take advantage of it while he is here. Excuse me, y'all. <coughs> so... You know, he's also just saying that that proves that he cares because he came all the way down here, you know. But she says that she has changed. You know, there's a big part of her that's different since being here, right? And, of course, that means a change to them both. And she says, you know, Sandy had came in and said she would wait in the room. But, you know, Billy's like, nah, you stay. You stay. Y'all finish having y'all day. Y'all wasn't expecting me here. You know, you two deserve y'all space. We could go ahead and talk later. Like, I'm good. You know, she lets Prosper know that she's fine. And she leaves. Of course, he's going to still be worried about her regardless, right? Now, Vi finally finds out what we all knew, okay? While Queen been lying, okay? He got some secrets. Social service done popped up and left their dag on card. You know, they say that they are looking for him because he haven't been showing up to school. That's how it starts. You know, the last three weeks, they've been trying to get in touch with him and his brother Dante. They're pretty sure there's no adult supervision at the house. And they like, you know, I guess somebody had told them that he works here at the diner. 
So Val was like, well, he's not here, but if I hear anything from him, I will definitely let you know. And she was like, yeah, this is serious, so please do. You know, I've seen a lot of situations like this, and they don't usually end well. So, of course, now Val going to have to, you know what I'm saying, see what's going on with Joaquin. Now, in the meantime... You know, they're all here talking about this harvest and talking about putting them together. And it's the same freaking old man that's always grumpy and always complaining and never want to, you know, put in on nothing. That's basically the same one that's in here complaining now, okay? And the daggone thing changed. You know, Prosper getting on in on him saying this is something that we all have to do. We all have to put in on for the land. You know, on top of that, Ralph Angel comes in and he's like, yeah, you know, Miss Parita's her house is going up for auction, okay? Okay, her land and there's an opportunity for them to go ahead with all the money that they put up they will have enough plus some change left over and they could go to this auction and possibly get her land back but we all have to be in on this together right and so they all say that they are in right now Mike could take his behind over to the dag on nft people and i'm sick of it okay i'm sick of it he's saying hi to them they acting all funny nobody want to give him a pound he's like what's that about and they're like basically you know he has said to the guy like so if i'm not selling then that means i'm out and the guy's basically telling him yeah right if you ain't bringing us no business if you ain't making us no money then pretty much we don't need you here right we already told you that things that have to do with like like social justice and all of that kind of stuff in history doesn't make any money it's not popular he starts showing him these daggone text messages and Micah seeing where I think it made like almost twenty eight thousand dollars so when Michael was opening up his phone, of course, the story with Charlie, when she first found out about his father cheating, came up. And he's talking about, now, see, that's what I'm talking about. This would be good. This would be perfect. You should go ahead and post this and sell this. And he's clicking on it. So Michael's first instinct is like, no, no way. Hell no, I'm not doing that. And he's like, yo, I got to get out of here, man. I'm late for class and I'm behind, you know, on an assignment anyway or whatever, right? And he have to take this picture of a fascinating stranger. And so the guy Zane is basically like, okay, artsy. You know, at the same time, he was telling him like, well, Davis is your father, whatever, right? Can't you get some type of pictures for him? And even that would be good. So basically, they just want to exploit Micah. And I'm just saying, Micah, leave these damn people alone, okay? Now, when Joaquin get back to the diner, of course, you know, I'm very, I don't waste no time. She show him the card and she's like, I think this is for you. He's like, she was here. He says, you know, what did you tell her? Did you tell her that I work here or whatever? She was like, but I know you need to tell me what the hell is going on right now. So finally, he opens up and says his mom didn't come back from like a couple of weeks ago. He's sorry, right? He says that him and his brother have been learning since they were younger that if for any reason their mom didn't come back, that means that they have to hide more than likely Ice got her, right? And... She was like, he, she's been teaching him that, right? And so basically they've been trying to hide and stay out of sight until she can get back to them because they don't have no other family. And of course the father's locked up, you know, and they would separate them. They would end up in foster care, right? So she don't want that to happen. And then he's like, you know, she's asking him, like, have you heard back from your mom? And he says, yeah, he has heard back from her. She's in Mexico and she's trying to get back to them now. So they just need to stay hid for as long as they can until she gets back right they so she told them to stay put so she's like nah this is not right and she was like dad you know them separating families or whatever she said well where's your brother you know you're gonna have to take me to him right now and show me where he is so she brings him to the brother and he got a dag on black eyes. She like, well, what the heck done happened to him? You know, apparently he done got into it at school. And of course, Rob being Vine, having the heart that she has. She's like, nah, y'all coming home with me. Pack up what you need to pack up. You know, you will stay with me in the meantime. And so we could get all this settled. So she trying to just basically, you know, bring them back home with her, whatever, right? Now, Ralph Angel gets to this baby and me thing, and he actually ends up seeing, you know, his friend that he had that was also working, you know, on the police force or whatever the case may be, right, was a cop. And, you know, he's telling him, like, it's good to see you here. It's good for it to be another black man here. You know, with their child, they both looking at each other babies and seeing how cute they are. 
you know, his friend is saying how hard him and his wife tried to have a baby, how they had to go through, you know, in vitro and all these different types of things to get him. And they finally have themselves a little boy. And so when Ralph Angel and him sit down, he's like, you're going to have to help me with this. And, you know, he's just letting him know, like, it's not hard. All we got to do is sit here and clap. And he like, that's it. They were so adorable. They was really cute. Okay. He was like, that's it. He was like, yeah, it shouldn't be too hard, you know? And so we move on to Blue and Zara after school and we find out that the whole problem is blue behind the hacked in the computer child he said they freaking history lessons was lacking they was not out here trying to teach them you know no good curriculum so he done hacked into the damn <laughs> the computer base is basically you know let all these knowledge be known about these historical black figures. And Zala was telling him, like, you know, you had the right thing in mind. I understand what you're saying, but that still doesn't make it okay for you to sit here and hack in. And so when the principal get back in here, you need to be, you know, apologizing for what you did. But then once he came back in and he was basically, you know, saying you're talking to him and, you know, Zala asked Blue, do you got anything to say? He starts to let him know, like, there's so many things that's not taught here at this school. There's so much stuff that we don't know. You know, y'all always want us to quote these things and know these things. And, of course, Blue is smart. So he's just quoting and reciting all this different type of stuff, you know, off the top of his head. And when Nadine gets back in principal, whatever he was, he basically was saying to them, like, I'm so happy that you could get here, Miss Borderlane. He was like, you know, it's unacceptable that he was, yeah, it was the principal, Principal Jack Jacobs, matter of fact, right? So he was saying like that's unacceptable behavior. And so when Dahl is like saying to, um, you know, Blue, what's going on? You know, what you want to say to him? He was like, you know, y'all teach us about quoting um, Walderman, you know, if I contradict myself and all of this stuff. Right. And I could say multitudes and all of that. And he was like, but yet we not basically learning, you know, about being on the ground and about Asita Shakur and, you know, um, we've been in the sky whatever right and Bessie Coleman the first black woman and the first indigenous woman to have a pilot's license and stuff like that right Jemison going to space in 1992 you know blue gonna break it down and so for some reason when Dahl is hearing him say all of this she starts to say like yeah I know blue was a lot of line you know hacking the computer or whatever right but I think he should actually be rewarded instead of punished so I said well not necessarily Dahl okay Okay, slow your roll. Like I get what you're saying, and he definitely is making a point. And so she does ask the principal, like you know, he's right to a certain degree. You know, has there been anything done? Are y'all trying to make any progress and change anything and address these problems that's happening in the curriculum? And he's like, well, it hasn't been discussed yet. And she was like, well, I think it should be discussed, and there should be a way, you know, for these things to be improved or whatever the case may be, right? And so I was like, okay, y'all, I don't know, maybe they're going to go ahead and work something out with that. Now, meanwhile, when Zam Anva get back home, Hollywood is like, girl, you done came back in here. You couldn't give me a phone call or nothing. You done brought a whole two human beings in here. You know, black people, we got to always be like the whole, okay, two whole human beings without talking to me. So she's saying there's nothing to talk about. She was like, these kids is in a bad situation. They really need us. You know, he's, of course, still saying how everything started with Joaquin and what he did. But she was like, you know, this is bigger than this. These kids is in a bad situation or whatever, right? And we got to have them here. He was asking how long they staying. And she said she don't know yet. It could be a couple days. Okay, we all they got. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, Hollywood going to have our back. He basically was like, listen, this is what comes with being with a strong, you know, borderline woman. All right. And so he basically was like, we are going to hold them down. Right. And I was like, oh, that's so sweet. You know, um, we going to see how that goes because we don't know necessarily even if they want them to be there, how that's going to work with social services and ice and everything else. OK, but their heart is definitely in the right place. And so we basically get, you know, Billy having this conversation with her husband. She finally opens up to him and let him know so much of her life was a lie. So much of her life was just her living it for him and to make him happy. Those was his dreams as far as their marriage, not hers. She didn't even know what she really wanted and didn't want. She didn't even know who she was. She tells him about, you know, being assaulted, being abused. 
um, just basically disappearing and being a shell of herself and not knowing, you know, what her dreams was and stuff like that, right? And a big part of her life being a lie. And she's like, by her coming here, she finally was able to face it and deal with different things, right? This is the reason why she came. And then once she came, she felt bad. Like, all this time I was thinking that I was this certain person or whatever, right? That I was a bad mother, a bad daughter, a bad friend. And therefore, if I was bad at those things, then obviously I would have had to be a bad wife too. But she was like, since I got here, I realized I'm not a bad mother. I'm not a bad person. I'm not a bad friend right so it basically gave her time to reevaluate everything and she was saying it wasn't fair to him either like there was a part of her that lied to herself and a part of her that lied to him you know and so I was happy that she was able to tell him her way her time you know it did need to be said he did need to understand what was going on and I think he definitely had a better understanding you know, she basically ended up saying to him that she was disbelieved and dismissed and it felt horrible, you know, and it made her have all kind of different problems. It basically, because of all of that, turns her into who she was. And, you know, what I'm saying she struggled with that for a long time and she second guessed who she was for a long time. And then when she came here and it was like, well, if any of if all of this stuff is not true, then maybe I am better than I thought or whatever, right? And then what does that make me? She was like, you know, I was punishing myself and I also was punishing you. Even if you didn't know it, right? It got taken out on you and you really didn't get the full me either. Nobody got the full me, right? And that was some real stuff, you know? She says, I never gave you all of me. I said, I know that's right, baby. Talk your talk, speak your truth. I was completely here for it. You know, she let him know that she had never fully let him in or whatever the case may be, right? And so she was like, that's not something that you could just fix. That's, you know, what she had been out here processing. And she was like, she can't take that back. It can't be undone, right? And so that has to be fixed from the inside. I said, baby, you better preach, you know, and he had no choice but to respect that. He was like, you know, OK, and he gave her a hug and he let her know that he's sorry that she went through that. Right. And um, then we have Ralph Angel and, you know, his friend. They was getting ready to leave, packing up their stuff from the baby and me. And he was saying how he quit the force, right? He didn't feel right being a police officer after everything that happened. And he actually ended up, started out doing volunteer work at this trans center. And the next thing you know, he begins, actually took over it and started running it. And that his wife comes and volunteers and basically, you know, helps him there. So they running that together. So... Ralph Angel was like, okay, so you do know what you want to do, you know, with yourself or whatever, right? And he was telling Ralph Angel he can't wait till he get everything off the ground. And they could go ahead and be getting, you know, that farm stuff delivered to them, right? And they was laughing about that. And so it was good seeing two black men hanging out and, you know, positivity and uplifting each other and being with their little babies, right? We don't see that enough. And so... Then we have Micah noticing this lady looking at this picture. And, of course, he has that assignment of taking, you know, a picture of somebody fascinating. And he's saying to her, you know, um, you cannot take a picture. He's basically saying what the, you know, assignment is. And she was like, oh, so he just running around here, you know, stealing all my stuff. I'm the one that used to have things set up like that because I'm the one that taught him, right? basically Micah's teacher Rashad because he was letting her know that he's one of his students and he also was saying how you know he had been so caught up into that picture that she was sitting there staring at right um I forgot the name that he called it but she was like oh Rashad told you to say that right and he was like yeah pretty much I needed something to break the ice and you know that was the first thing that came to my mind and so she was saying, well, why would you want to take a picture with me, right? What do you think that looks so fascinating about me? And he was like, I mean, you're stunning. You're beautiful. You know, I could see the artistic look to you. You fly with your design and look and all that stuff, right? Like, why wouldn't I? And she was like, oh, I see. Okay, you know how to flirt a little bit too, right? And so he was like, you know, you're just beautiful. And, um, you know, she's, he asked, could he take a picture of her like in front of the picture, right? Because then it dawned on him and he realized after a couple minutes, like, wait, you're a photographer. And she's like, yep, I sure am, right? And it's like, this is your picture. You actually are the picture that, you know, the artist 
that did this photograph and she was like yeah I sure am because he was saying how he get lost in the eyes and he found himself you know looking in her eyes for hours the other day right and so she was like yeah I used to look at those eyes for hours too right this was the love of my life I said "Woo, I know that's right right because um I think he said it was Kennedy Carter's work if I'm not mistaken and then you know she basically was like yep and then come to find out this is her right and so he basically, you know, was saying that um, it was stunning and all that different kind of stuff. Just trying to give as much different compliments as he could, right? And she was letting him know that it was nice to meet him. And so she does allow him to take the picture in front of it, right? Um, And then I think he took like two or three of her. And then she takes his camera from him. And she starts snapping some shots of him. You know, he want to be acting on shot, putting his hand up. But she asked him, like... You know, so what's what is it about you, right? Who are you? What are you into? What are you trying to do? And Micah couldn't answer. He over here talking about, you know, I'm still trying to figure it out or whatever the case may be, right? I'm not really sure yet. That's what I'm trying to work out now. And so basically she was letting him know like, well, don't let other people tell you who you are, right? Sooner or later, you need to figure that out for yourself. And by the next time that I see you, you know, I expect for you to have a daggone answer, right? Don't let other people define you. You define you, right? And I was like, I know that's right. That's like the best advice that you could possibly give because I don't know what's going on with Micah right now. But like I said, I'm not feeling it, okay? He's getting a little shaky. You know, in the meantime, we got Nova. She's sitting here taking, you know, these pics or whatever. And she's texting back and forth with um you know dominic and so when she gets this video call i think at first she thought it was gonna be dominic she pick it up smiling but it's her editor calling her like girl we have not heard an answer from you yet these people still want to know about this movie and she is basically saying that you know she would not be able to say yes and agree to anything unless she know her whole family is on board and she's like you know i haven't even spoke to them yet so her editor's like well you got to get on top of it and have this conversation with them and get back to me ASAP okay so I'm like that's gonna be interesting right but I'm glad that at least you know Nova is saying like all my family will have to be on board or I can do it right she ain't just jumping to it and just automatically saying you know yeah she would do it so then we get this scene that's basically you know Miss um Zala out with you know blue having some ice cream and this girl from college recognizes her and she's basically calling her you know by her maiden name and Zala correct son was like no it's Zala border lane and this is my son you know blue border lane and she tells him to go get some more sprinkles or whatever and she's bringing up like damn how old is he she's like it's been 11 years since you know we was in college it don't seem like it and she's saying yeah you know, is he's um Charlie's son because he sure did do look a lot like him. He got his whole face. Was it Charlie or Chris? It was something with a C. Okay. She was like, he got his whole face. He's looking just like him, you know, and that's basically around the time frame. And you two was inseparable during that time. And so Dollar was like, first of all, no, that's not his face. No matter of fact, it was Chase, y'all. I know it was something with a C. So she's like, Ralph Angel is his father, and that's that on that, okay? And she was like, well, you and Chase did have a moment and y'all was always going hard. And she's like, no, actually, we didn't have a moment. There was no moment. OK, I was passed out. And so she's like, oh, my God. You know, she told us she was unconscious. She was like, I had no idea. And so she was like, I'm sorry. And then she starts telling her how, you know, um, because she was like, wait, was it that night? And Dollar just started saying the past was the past. And she was like, you know, he's running for Congress. And there was rumors back then. And so Dollar said, look, I'm in the present. I'm looking for my future. You know, that's the past. Let it go. And so my curiosity is here. Like, dee -dee 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 -dee, what's going on here? Because on one hand, I'm like, girl, read the room. First of all, you see her with her son. So that was really disrespectful for you to be going all hard and trying to have that type of conversation in front of him. That's number one. And number two. Is there some secrets going on here? Is there more to the story that we don't know more that Zola didn't say on purpose? Or is it a thing of, because if I remember correctly, she always says she didn't know who the father was and it didn't matter who the father was. She made it a point to finally let Rough Angel know what, she, what happened. She says she was unconscious and she didn't remember anything. 
But now for this girl to automatically be like, oh, he just like ch look just like Chase and you was there with Chase and talking about, oh, was it that night? So was this a situation where she knew that Dala was messed up and she was there too and she just left her there and didn't even know she was unconscious? Like, what was the night? What really was going on, right? And if that's the case, was that something that Dala honestly didn't remember because of being unconscious? Because it could be possible. I know she said with her being mixed up with so much drugs, she didn't really remember, right? Or was it a thing of she knew, but she just, this is just something she wanted to forget, which that could be a possibility too. And nobody can't really blame her, you know, either way. But of course, with this whole situation going on and everything that she went through, just when that book came out, for Nova to come now and talk about this damn movie, of course, she really going to be like, oh, hell no, you know? And is this something where Charlie could possibly bump into this damn guy, Chase, since he's so-called saying that he's going to Congress? Or is this chick going to go and run her mouth and now he going to want to come sniffing around them? Because they ain't bring up this whole scene for nothing, y'all. Okay, you best believe it. So now I'm really curious as to how that's all going to play out. But I was like, girl, bye. Like, what are you doing? She's steadily telling you it's the past. I moved on. I don't want to talk about it. And she still keep on trying to talk. So, of course, her and... um. You know, Blue just get out of there after that. And when she get home, she was acting a little weird with Ralph Angel. He could pick up on it. He's like asking her how her trip was. And she's just like, I'm fine. I'm fine. And giving him a whole bunch of hugs and kisses or whatever. Right. So then we get to this auction and they making, you know, everybody making their bids. Ralph Angel gets to 240 and it's quiet for a minute. They thinking that, you know, he going to be able to go ahead and walk away with this 240, right? It was the highest bid. They telling him he got it. Man, Sam raggedy behind come yelling from the back, 700. And they like 700, anybody 700, anybody else 700? Because you know it had went from 200,000 to 210, 220, whatever. And then Ralph Angel came in with the 240 and it really didn't look like nobody else was going to say nothing. So I was like, you know, Sam really had to bring his raggedy behind it. Every time they take two steps forward, he did trying to push them 10, pack, you know, 10 steps back. So Ralph Angel started yelling out to him and following him. Nova trying to calm him down. And stop him or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, Ralph Angel, the last thing you need to do, even though we can't stand this man and we all want him damn dead, you can't go and be his behind or nothing like that, right? Out here in front of everybody else when they could be a witness. So it's not really much, you know, you're going to be able to do. They was basically so saying it was sold to Landry's, you know, enterprises. So I was like, damn, man, come on, like, let them catch a break. So they all go following behind him and, you know, Ralph is like, I know you hear me talking about you. And he says, yeah, I was on the land the other day with a drink in my hand or whatever the case may be. And he basically got a damn call telling him that the damn um decision has been reversed or whatever. Right. And they let him know, like, OK, well. That has nothing to do with Parnita. Why are you taking it out on her? Leave her alone. He going to talk about, well, you morons never need to, see, to know how to leave nothing alone. So maybe today you will learn. So basically this is payback because the decision that the council originally made got reversed after Nova ended up going out there and doing her, you know, tribute thing with her dance and everything like that last week right that's what i'm assuming and so it's like one win for them but then it's her and Parthena in the other way you know when prosper get back to the house you basically have um billy looking through these photos and saying how you know she don't know if she's ever going to experience a love like him and her mom had and he was like yeah you can absolutely you can you know and he says sometimes he feel bad like, you know, he's doing something wrong or whatever, right? That was his clappiest, happiest time, his best time. And, you know what I'm saying? He don't know if he should be moving on right. And she let him know, like, yes, you should. You know, mom, he was like, you know, I don't want to replace your mom. She said, you could never replace her. And she's always here with us every day. You're not. She's still with us, you know, and she would want you to be happy. She said, and besides that, Sandy loves you. You know, I want you to be happy. You got a lot more time in front of you. And he was like, and so do you. And so he asked her if she was going to the potluck, you know, tonight. And she said she didn't know about that. She was thinking about staying home. But he was like, nah, I think you might want to come. So she's like, daddy, what are you up to? You got that look in your eye or whatever, right? And he just basically like, you know, you come and find out. We see that Vi and them got to talk to, 
you know, um, Joaquin and Don say daddy and they got to speak to him through video as well. He was just so thankful to them that they had the kids and was saying, please, that's all I'm worried about. Like, don't even worry about me and here in jail. I can hold that down. I'm more concerned to know that they're OK. And as long as I know that they are with you, you know, I'm good. Social services come to look around the house and the lady was being a little like, mm -hmm, you know, making faces and all of that. Right. And she basically was saying that they had to have all that liquor moved out the way. And then she started asking about, is there any other adults, right? Because she said, well, I don't usually do this, but I would let the kids stay here in the meantime while the process is still going through. So they was like, well, what else exactly do you need? And she was basically like, you know, the regular stuff, your employment, you know, it's more paperwork y'all got to fill out. We got to do a background check. And she was like, you know, any adults that's in here, we have to know that they don't have no criminal record and all of that. And of course, that's going to be an issue because Ralph Angel, right? So I said, oh boy, you know, they just kind of look at each other and they never answered her. But in the meantime... They can, um, you know, be at least temporary guardians until they get the rest straight. Her and Hollywood just kind of, you know, look at each other. So now in the meantime, Micah ass got these guys over here in his house. And they still being disrespectful, shady, and messy while they in his house. I'm saying, Micah, kick they asses out. Why are you acting so needy like you so hard up for damn friends and people to like you and accept you? I'm not getting it. Like, uh, this don't even seem the way that Michael usually is, so I'm confused, you know? And he's telling them these different ideas, and the guy Zane is just being real weird. Like, oh, we about to be out of here. We going to have one more drink. And he's telling Michael, like, I invested on you, and I invested in you. You was lucky with one sale or whatever. But then the rest of your photos you posted didn't make no money. And he's basically like, you know, it's not going to work, but I can still be cool with you and all this other type of stuff, right? It has nothing to do with the business. And I'm trying to understand why Mike is just acting like he freaking so freaking hard up for these people that he's willing to sell his damn soul and be exploited behind it. Like make it make damn sense. So in the meantime, you know, Vince does show up. He wants to say goodbye. He says that Prosper invited him. You know, Billy tells him that she's glad that he did stop by. She asks him if he want to dance. He says yes. You know, first day a little awkward and funny, whatever the case may be. You know, getting on the dance floor. And he tells her that he's willing to wait for her, right? He's willing to wait for her. He'll be there. Let her do what she needs to do. He will be waiting. But when she does come back, if she comes back, you know, he's willing to let the relationship be on her terms or whatever the case right he's fine with that now now that he's had a chance to process everything that she's been going through and feeling for all these years however okay when she do get back she would either have to you know marry him or whatever the case may be right and um you know tell her tell him what she needs tell him what she you know went through digest what she went through in her past and he knows that she deserves the room and that it's been real traumatic for her and all of that but he would need her to marry him when he get back right or don't make that decision right it can't be no in between so i respect it you know in the meantime zane is telling um freaking Micah, you're smart you know you're a good person you're a hard worker you know and you put yourself out there whatever and that's okay and like I said, it's okay if, you know, you don't fit into this or whatever and you don't want to do like what we're doing no matter what. We'll always be cool. And he go ahead and take this last shot and he's telling the guys to come on. And then he turned to Micah and was like, you know, it's some other type of party or after party or whatever. Was he going with them? And Micah was like, nah, I'm good. Y'all go ahead or whatever. And they walk out, you know what I'm saying? And it's like this gift thing that he's looking at from Charlie from the game. When she went off on the court, that's basically saying, what did you do? What did you do? And he's looking back and forth at it. And I'm like, Micah, no, I know you're not going to freaking sit here and send this and put this up here or whatever. Just to be able to be down with these guys to make a damn dollar. Like, you don't even need it like that. If you really wanted damn money... You could freaking get it from your mama or your daddy and you could sell your damn paintings in other ways. Like you're being a real dutz right now, okay? And it's pissing me the hell off. I'm trying to be understanding to it, but I just don't see how you could be understanding, you know? 
And of course, we was flashing back and forth, like between him and Billy and Vince and you know, them talking. And he was saying that, you know, no more secrets. They got to grow together. They got to be able to be up front with each other. Or like I said, don't, right? There's no more in between. And I respect it. I feel like they both was real with each other, grown with each other, and they had the conversation that they needed to have. So when we freaking flip back to damn um, Micah. He submits the damn thing anyway, y'all. I wanted to go through that damn TV and slap him like 10 times. Like, are you serious, Micah? In the meantime, we got Prosper. He living his best life. He come in there playing his damn trumpet child. He just a jamming on back. He got all of them marching in with him. And then he tells Sandy, like, I love you. You know what I'm saying? You make me so happy. I've been enjoying this time. What I have with you? If you will have me, I want to return the joy and passion and love for as long as I can. And he pulled this ring out and he gets down on his knee. And he was just basically like, will you marry me? You know, Envy and Dollar and, you know, Ralph Angel and, you know, everybody in the diner, including, um, you know, Billy. They are all smiling and looking like, oh, yes. Okay. Yes, she says yes that she will, okay. And I know that they have not known each other for that long, baby. But they said we all we ain't got time to be playing no games, okay? And we still got it and we still giving it. And so I was like, listen, go ahead, do it, y'all. All right, do it, do it, do it. And one thing I also forgot to mention, one of our, our friends had came and said that Prosper invited her too. And she tried to throw some shade at Billy. She was like, oh, wasn't she all up on your other husband before? Now she trying to be up on your new one. And Anva had to check her and let her know. First of all, Hollywood is my forever husband, period, point blank. He ain't going nowhere and neither am I, okay? That is the apple to my eye. She says, second of all, that was not her fault, okay? Um, Billy, whatever the hell his name was, started those rumors. He's the one that dragged her. He's the one that was trying to mess with her. That was a whole bunch of foolishness, okay? So we're not going to repeat that up and around through here no more, okay? We're going to make sure... So, you know what I'm saying? Come correct or don't come at all. And I was like, I know that's right, Anva, okay? Check her damn behind and let her know. And so that basically was the episode, y'all. You know, tell me what y'all thought about this episode. What y'all think Anva and I'm going to do to Micah when they find out this damn foolishness he done did. He done became damn, you know, Nova number two. And we already know, like I said... That Zala is not going to be with this damn book being turned into a movie. You know, how is that going to work? Is Ralph Angel moving out the house now to be able to let these two boys stay because of the fact that he's a convict? Child, we need the borderlands and borderlines to catch a break, honey, okay? We need them to catch a break. <laughs> But you guys put it all in the comments. Let's discuss, let's discuss. Like, comment, share, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. If you are so inclined, give me a wave. Let me know you came by. Put some flames up in the sky. All right, y'all. Till next time.